everyone. I just finished my workout for today. I'm gonna to go ahead and let you watch me do it first. My wind chimes. You guys, okay, I wanted to make this quick, but I have to talk about these wind chimes. I know they're hideous. My neighbor bought them, like at the Rite Aid. I know she bought them at Rite Aid because I saw them there, but um, she bought them for me after um, Rudy died earlier this year, and she said um, whenever they go off, that's Rudy. So um, I'm getting a little message from my dearly beloved little baby. Um, so say hi to Rudy, everybody. Um, okay, so <laughs> the workout. All right, so um, there are, there's a lot to go over and demonstrate and explain it. I took a lot of time after the workout explaining the format and demonstrating all of the exercises and going over equipment-free modifications and beginner modifications. So um, keep watching because after the workout, you'll see all of that, all of the equipment-free modifications because I am using several pieces of equipment today. I am using my jump rope, I'm using my sandbag, I'm using my dip bar, I'm using my oogie ball, and I'm using a set of 10 pound dumbbells. So if you have all that stuff, go ahead and grab it, take a minute to get warmed up, and you can do the workout right along with me. Um, if you don't have any of those things, it's fine. Keep watching, watch me do the workout first, and then after the workout, um, I will go over everything and explain everything and demonstrate all of the equipment-free modifications and beginner modifications. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so my watch is going Timer's going, there's no rest in a row. Let's get right into our first one minute of jump rope. Moving on, there's no rest interval. So, right away starting our first combo. Last one was a little sloppy. I want to try to fit as many as I can in during the four minutes, but. Never finish that thought, but I think it's probably obvious. I'm trying that I'm, I'm trying to fit. This is technically interval training. It's a long work interval, but I am trying to fit in as many reps as I can. 
during this four minutes. So I do want to keep the pace up, but not at the expense of my form. So just needed to slow down a little bit and really focus on the movement. There's no point. Fight for that balance. There's no point in just racing through as many reps as possible if they are not good quality reps. That's kind of pointless. I guess you're getting your heart rate up, but that's not the point of this combo. We've got starting each five minute segment with jump rope to get our heart rate up. And then the remainder of each five minute segment is uh, predominantly strength training. So, I do want to do as many reps as I can, but speed is definitely secondary. Okay, no rest interval. So as quickly as you can, grab your jump rope.
as quickly as you can. Moving on to jump rope. Obviously, we're losing time off of each work interval. Saying we're losing time off of each work interval, no matter what. So just try to keep it as minimal as you can. Try to lose as little time as you can. Get right into the next combo. Here we go. And you raise burpees. Moving the entire work interval. There are no rest intervals. So even though it's gonna take time to reset equipment and move from one exercise to the next, there's no designated time resting and not doing anything so I took a short rest there because I'm just getting fatigued and I need a few sets needed a few seconds so obviously your pace will start to slow down as you fatigue and as you get further into each work interval, it's kind of a burnout because we're doing each exercise for close to four minutes without stopping. So slowing down is to be expected. And if you absolutely need to pause and rest for a few seconds, then obviously do what you have to do. Just keep the rest as short as possible. And if you're strong enough to make it through 
the entire four minute work interval without pausing to rest. That's what you're going for. But obviously, if you need to rest, you need to rest. Keep it short. All right, jump rope. jump rope interval. I might have to invoke my minimum of 100 reps roll. I'll fill you in on that when we get there. I was hoping to avoid it, but it's all good. Okay, next combo. I'm slowing down on. I'm definitely losing steam. Pushing. I've only 30 seconds left. Try to fit in one or two more of these. And then just two more rounds.
reps. Especially when we're already 20 minutes in to the workout, so do your best. Push. That's fifteen. All right. Do that when you're happy. Final set. Jump rope. Minimum hundred reps. 
Hopefully we get it done before time is up. I have a feeling not.
actually complete until we've done our bonus burpee. So we have just one rep left to do. But before I do my bonus burpee, when I do a jump rope workout, in addition to my bonus burpee, I like to do a bonus set of 100 skips, meaning 100 revolutions of the rope. Totally optional, but if you would like to join me, we're just gonna do this now. 100 quick reps of jump rope, here we go. through the bonuses since I'm still moving still doing reps I like to get credit for those calories burned so according to my watch in a total of 32 minutes and 16 seconds I burned a total of 259 active calories 306 total calories and maintained an average heart rate of 167 beats per minute. So now you see me do everything, you know what the workout looks like, let's just go through all the combos so I can show you um, step by step what we're doing in case you need to, anything clarified. Um, and we'll go through the equipment-free modifications now as well. So we were starting with jump rope. If you have a jump rope, um, you don't have to jump rope the way I do. I always just kind of jog in place while I jump rope, but you can do jump rope jacks, you can do twist jumps, you can do side to side jumps, you can jump with your feet together, whatever's comfortable for you. If you do not have a jump rope, or you can't jump rope where you live, uh, you can pretty much do any kind of cardio exercise. So you can pretend you're jumping rope with me and just jump rope without the rope, um, or you can just jog in place, you can do high knees, if you have a boogie ball or something similar like a small plyo box or low surface like a low chair or a stool you can do toe taps very similar to high knees you can do jumping jacks side jump lunges mountain climbers if you have uh, an exercise bike or a treadmill you can hop on one of those for one minute to start each segment so um there's really pretty much like endless possibilities for what you can do for those one minute sections if you don't have a jump rope. Um, so let's move on to the combos. So for the first combo, I was using my mat. So if you have an exercise mat, uh, I'd say it would be a good idea to grab that. If you're working out on a carpeted floor, you probably won't need a mat, but I was using it because I was coming down on my knee and um, I don't want to do that on concrete and I wouldn't want to do it if I was in my living room either just working out on a wood floor. So if you have an exercise mat or a towel, go ahead and grab that. So I'm standing in the middle of my mat. I'm going to come down, put my hands on the ground in front of me, kick my feet back so that I'm in a plank position, do a push up. Now I'm going to jump the feet back in and stand. Now um, I'm going to lunge to one side and touch the toes. On the way back up, I'm going to bring up, bring this knee up, and then I'm going to do an assisted pistol squat, meaning that instead of having my foot in front of me, I'm going to keep this knee bent and keep the foot behind me so that as I sink down into my squat, once I get to the point where I need some assistance, this foot is here to help me and I can tap that foot down as needed. And then the same thing as I stand, I'm going to press this heel, pressing the heel of this standing leg, actively pressing it into my mat and activating all these muscles in my standing foot and leg, all the way up from my glutes, core, I'm gonna stand. And as needed, I'm gonna use this back foot to help push myself up. 
I want to use the back foot as little as possible, but it's there to help as needed. That's why it's an assisted pistol squat. Um, if you're strong enough to do a pistol squat without the assistance, then you can do your squat with your foot in front of you. That's totally fine. But we're doing four minutes of this, so keep in mind that you're gonna have to do it for four minutes. So we're alternating sides with each rep. So a little faster, hands come down, jump the feet back, push up, jump the feet back in. Now lunge into this side, touch the toe, knee up, assisted pistol squat if you need the assistance. There you go, that's the combo. So it's already equipment free, uh, so I don't need to show you an equipment free modification. Um, if you need to do the push-ups from your knees, do the push-ups from your knees. If the pistol squats are too difficult, even with your um, foot behind you, you can have a chair behind you and squat into a chair. Let me show you that real quick. So if you need a slightly easier variation on the pistol squat, here's what you can do. Um, so I have a chair on either side of my mat. I'm gonna start standing in the middle of my mat. Come down on my hands. You can step the feet back if you're unable to um, jump them back and now come down on the knees if you need to. Do your push-up from the knees. Come back up on the toes, step the feet back in. Now, uh, side lunge. If you are not able to come all the way down and touch the toes, just work to your own level. So if you can only come down this far, that's fine. Just make sure you're using proper form. So roll the shoulders back and down, keeping them away from your ears. Pinch the shoulder blades together, keep your chest lifted high. Nice, strong, tight, engaged core. You want your back to stay straight, so you're going to accomplish that by keeping the chest up to the high, pushing the booty back, as though you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. That's gonna help you keep the weight in your heels as you sink down into your side lunge, as deep as you can go. So explore your full range of motion. If you can, come down and touch the toes, great, but don't force your body into doing something that you're not ready to do yet. So work to your own level. Come down as far as you can. If you're able to bring the knee up, great. If not, then just do your lunge and step back. And then from here, you can do your pistol squat. So I have the chair behind me. I'm just going to lift this leg and sit in my chair. And then again, pressing the heel of this standing leg into the ground, really actively press it into the ground, activate all of these muscles in your standing leg from the foot all the way up through your leg, glutes, core, and stand up. You can also have something next to you to hold on to, like you can set this up next to your couch or dining room table um, if, if you need even more assistance. And if that still is not working, you can just do a regular squat. So showing you this beginner modification again, a little bit faster so you see the foam. So come down with the hands, step the feet back, knees come down, knee push up, back up to the toes, step the feet back in. Now lunge the other side as low as you can. And now step into this chair on the other side, holding on to something behind you if you need to for support. Sit down to the chair and then up. Pistol squats are still too difficult or it's just too much uh, maneuvering around with the chairs and everything, then just do a regular squat. So hands down, step or jump the feet back, push up from the toes or from the knees, up, back to the toes, step or jump the feet back in, side lunge as deep as you can go. And then from here, you can just do an air squat. Again, sinking as deep as you can. So push the booty back like you're trying to touch the wall behind you keeping your back straight, chest is lifted high, weight is in the heels. Sink as low as you can, but work to your own level. So if this is as low as you can go in your squat, fine. Okay, then that's your air squat, totally fine. Alternating sides, so again, step or jump the feet back. Knees down if you need to for your push up. Back up to the toes, step the feet back in. Now lunge to the other side as deep as you can go. And squat. I know that's a tough little combo, so hopefully that's enough in the way of modifications, even if you're a complete beginner. But as always, if there's anything that I'm not covering in the video, if anything is unclear, if you have any questions, or if you need any further help with modifications or substitutions beyond what I'm covering here, please just ask. It's so important to me that the work are, workouts are accessible to anyone 
and everyone who wants to do them with me. So I'm always here to answer questions or help in any way I can to facilitate that. So if you have questions, please just ask. The next little combo I was doing was a sandbag squat and a cross leg push up. So I was doing the squat with the sandbag on my shoulder. So I'm gonna bend down, pick up my sandbag, throw it over my shoulder and do a squat with the sandbag on this shoulder. Now I'm gonna throw the sandbag down. Sorry, I know that's loud. It echoes under this little awning. And I'm gonna do a one leg push up. So hands come down, I'm gonna jump my feet back. And my feet are kind of wide. I'm going to take one leg and cross the ankle, cross the ankles like this and do my push up from this position. See which side my sandbag is on? That's the side I'm crossing my legs on, just so I can make sure I'm alternating with each rep. Now this foot's gonna come back, I'm gonna jump the feet back in. So now the sandbag's on this side for my next rep, I'm gonna switch to the other side. So, stand, pick up the sandbag, throw it over the other shoulder, squat, throw the sandbag down on the same side. Now hands come down, kick the feet back wide, cross the other ankle, cross it so that my feet are on the same side as the sandbag and do my push up from this position. Feet come back and jump in. If you don't have a sandbag, you might be able to make something similar to a sandbag by using a duffel bag or a backpack and filling it with some kind of weight like bags of beans or rice or something like that. Um, if that's not gonna work, you might not have a sandbag and you might not have anything similar, but you might have a ball or you might have dumbbells or a kettlebell. So um, basically these are all burpee variations, um, all these combos, they're basically burpee variations. So any burpee variation will be fine, but let's say you have an oogie ball. I know not a lot of people have it, but um, let, let's just say you have an oogie ball. Here's something you could do. So you could do like a wood chop with your oogie ball and then put the ball down, jump the feet back and do a one leg push up on, on or a cross leg push up on an oogie ball and then switch sides. So wood chop to the other side, jump the feet back, cross the feet to this side and do your push up. Um, you could use a medicine ball for that as well, or maybe a kettlebell. With a kettlebell or a dumbbell, you could do something like this. We did this combo very recently, just like a few days ago, like last week or so. But holding my dumbbell in both hands like this, put the dumbbell down, kick the feet back, and you could do a cross side push up, that's fine, on the dumbbell, or you could keep the feet here and do your push up from here jump the feet back in, and since it was a squat and push-up combo that I was doing with the sandbag, you could do counterweight squat and add this little uh, lift if you want, something like that. And if you need an equipment-free modification, really any burpee variation will do, so you can come down, jump the feet wide, do your cross-leg push-up, jump the feet back in, and then do any squat variation. So maybe squat, and do an oblique knee twist, and then switch sides. So now cross the feet to the other side, do your push up, squat, and do your oblique twist this way. So any kind of push up and squat variation will work there. I need to take a quick pause and go inside and put insect repellent all over my body because I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, so I'll be back. So if you don't know, I'm from New York, and um, so I know from mosquitoes. Um, I've lived in LA for over 20 years now though, and that used to be like the one good thing that about LA summers, right? It's so brutal, so hot, but at least there's no humidity, at least there's no mosquitoes. Except now LA summers include humidity and we have this horrible, aggressive, invasive species of mosquitoes. They're called ankle biters. Um, they're not, uh, they're, they're invasive, so they're, they're not um, indigenous to this area, so they have no natural predators. And every year, uh, it started, I wanna say like two, three summers ago, and every year it gets worse and worse and worse. And it is so bad. They are so aggressive and they're so fast. They're smaller than the mosquitoes I grew up with on the East Coast, and they're harder to kill. 
um, they're just, they're fast. They do their thing and then they're gone. It's rare that I see one on my leg. And even when I do, it's hard to get them. They're just, they're smaller and faster. Um, so they will just eat up my whole legs within a matter of like a few minutes. They're a nightmare. So I just had to take a break and go rub insect repellent all over myself. And now I stink, but hopefully I won't get bitten anymore. Okay. Moving on, so what's the next combo? One, two, three. My next combo was me raise burpees. Let me grab my dip bar. So here's what I was doing. I was doing the push up kind of inside my dip bar. So I'm starting with my feet right up against the dip bar here, putting my hands down in between these two um, bars that are on the ground, kicking my feet back and doing my push up from here. Jump the feet in and then I'm grabbing the handles and raising the knees to the chest. That's one rep. Um, I only do them that way out here for the sake of the video. Um, when I do them inside, I usually do the push up over here and then step forward and do my knee raise. So if you do have a dip bar, you might find that more comfortable. I just do the push-up inside the dip bar so it's easier to stay in the frame. I love my dip bar. I think it's a great piece of equipment. And if you follow my workouts regularly, it's probably not a bad idea to invest in one because I do use it pretty often. The one I use is from Ultimate Body Press, if you're interested. Um, it's not like I'm sponsored or anything. Um, so I, I'm not gonna like get any, I don't have like a discount code to give you, but if you're interested in the exact one that I use, it's from Ultimate Body Press. It's a great piece of equipment, but there are plenty of pieces of equipment similar to this one. Um, I believe there is an Amazon branded one that's probably pretty cheap. So check on Amazon. There's another one, I always forget the name of it, but I think it starts with an L. It's two pieces, but you can use it for the same thing. Um, it's not all one connected piece like that. Um, what else? Oh, if you have an old walker, you could even go on like offer up or something. I've done it before just to see. And I found one of those old walkers in two seconds for like 10 bucks. So that would be a great investment if you want to follow my workouts, because I do use this piece of equipment a lot and pretty much everything I do with this, you can do with one of those old style walkers and they're designed to hold your body weight. They're very sturdy, very stable. So that's a great option. Um, another thing you can do if you don't have this piece of equipment or something similar is you can do hanging knee raise burpees. I don't have anywhere out here to put my uh, pull up bar to demonstrate it. Um, let me wait for the plane. The pull up bar that I have, um, I bought it at like Bed Bath Beyond like 100 years ago. It's like 30 bucks minus 20%, of course. Um, so you can find one of those pull up bars that just goes like in your doorway. Um, pretty cheap, that's a great investment. But um, you can also take this work up to the park. There is a park within walking distance of me that has pull-up bars of different heights. So you can really do this um, if you have your own pull-up bar or you can take it somewhere where there's a pull-up bar like your local park or something. So just do your push-up and then grab your pull-up bar and then pull your, like hang from the pull-up bar and do your hanging knee raise from the pull-up bar. I can't really show you, but I think everybody knows what a hanging knee raise is. If it's unclear, just ask me. Um, I will actually go to the park and make a little quick video and demonstrate it if you don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe I'll probably just do it in my living room. But um, that's another great possibility. If you don't have a dip bar or something similar, you don't have a pull-up bar, um, then you can do knee hug burpees. So basically, you're just looking to do a uh, push-up ab combo, okay? So you can try this uh, version of knee raise, not knee raise, knee hug burpees that also, we just did these a few days ago as well. Um, they're pretty challenging, but this would be a great substitution. So I'm gonna come down on my mat and I'm going to extend my arms overhead and my legs straight out. Do a knee hug and now from here, I'm going to sit up, place my feet flat on the ground in front of me, and I'm going to throw my body weight forward. I can't demonstrate it slowly, so I'm talking you through it and then I'll show it to you. Throw my body weight forward in one motion so that I'm in this position. Then I'm gonna put my hands down on the ground in front of me, 
kick my feet back and do my push up from this position. Kick the feet back in and reverse the movement. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like when you put it all together because I can't demonstrate the main part of it slowly. So, knee hug, throw the weight forward in one motion like that. Hands go down the ground in front of you, kick the feet back, push up, jump the feet in and return. A little bit faster so you can see the flow. Knee hug, push up, knee hug, push up. That's a pretty challenging burpee variation. So you can always just do an easier version Come down here on your mat, do your push up from here, and now come down onto the mat, roll over, and do your knee hug. Roll back over and go into the next jump. Push up, knee hug. Okay, and really, you can do any kind of ab exercise. So push up. Instead of a knee hug, you can do a leg raise, you can do a pike, you can do a sit up, any kind of um, ab exercise you want. My next combo was these oogie pop burpees. So I have my ball on the ground in front of me. I'm gonna come down, put my hands on the ball, jump the feet back into a plank position and do a push up with my hands on the ball from this position like this. Now I'm gonna jump the feet in, and then I'm going to jump to the other side of the ball so that I'm standing in front of it. And I'm gonna do an oogie pop, which is really just a squat, without losing my balance, and squat down until my booty touches the ball, and then I'm gonna pop up, oogie pop, okay? And then I'm gonna jump back into the starting position so that I'm standing back on this side of the ball. So hands come down, kick the feet back, Push up, jump the feet in, jump to the other side of the ball, squat, pop, and jump. So again, if you follow my workouts regularly, you may notice that I do use my oogie ball quite a bit, and I do think it's a great piece of equipment. However, I will be the first to tell you it is overpriced for what it is. It's a great piece of equipment, but I don't think it needs to be as expensive as it is. Um, I received mine as a Christmas present. <laughs> So um, I, I do think it's a good investment if you wanna follow my workouts. You could also check and see, like I said, on Craigslist or I don't know, eBay or what, I don't know what, what people use, OfferUp, and see if you could find one. Um, a lot of times you can find used workout equipment cheap because people buy it and think they're gonna use it and then they don't use it, so they sell it. Um, so you could always check and see if you could find one secondhand. Um, but if you don't want to invest in something like that, you don't have to. Uh, you also can do this, but the reason that I do like the ball though is because the instability of the ball. Specifically, the instability of the ball adds a lot of difficulty, but you can do the same thing on a little plyo box or a chair. If you have a sturdy dining room chair that is strong enough to hold your entire body weight, you might be able to use that as well. Um, if you have a small pile box, that would work great. You can take this to the park and use a park bench. Um, you can take this to your local high school track and use the bleachers, okay? So lots of options if you want to do something similar on a different type of elevated surface. Just make sure that your elevated surface is strong and sturdy. Make sure it's not gonna slide around on you. Make sure it can hold your entire body weight. But um, here's uh, another possibility if you don't have a ball. So I come down and grab my plyo box by the sides, jump my feet into the plank and do a push up on the plyo box like this. So basically the same thing, but I'm doing it on the plyo box instead of my oogie ball. Jump the feet back in, and wait for the plank. So if you're using a plyo box, specifically, you can jump up onto your plyo box and then jump over to the other side of your plyo box, do your squat. So Chest is lifted high, shoulders back and down. Straight back, strong, tight, engaged core. Stick the booty back. Squat down until your booty touches the plyo box and then pop up. 
And then you can, I don't want to jump around this. I feel like I would bruise my feet. So you can do it like a twist jump and just alternate sides to your next rep from this side. Take the feet back, push up on the pile box. Jump, jump, squat, and pop. If you want to take this down to your local high school track and you're using bleachers, you can't jump up and over the bleachers, but you can put your hand down on the bleachers, kick your feet back, do a push up, jump the feet in, and then do like a box jump and just jump down. And then from here, you can do a squat jump. That would be um, a great alternative. So it can really be a lot of fun to challenge yourself and get creative and use what you've got available to you. Not just in your home, like making use of household items, but make use of the facilities that you have available to you in your neighborhood. You know, take advantage of your local park if there's exercise equipment there or benches that you can use. A sturdy park bench would be great for that last exercise. You can jump right up on it. Um, uh, take advantage of your local high school. If you can get into the area where the track is and use the bleachers, I mean, there's um, resources all over that you can use. And I think that's part of the fun is challenging yourself to come up with, um, to get creative and use what you have available to you to come up with a modification that's going to suit your workout space. I was rushing to get that last thought out because of the plane. Um, hopefully you've heard all of it. It wasn't anything groundbreaking. Um, if you do not have anything that you can use for an elevated surface to do the variations I um, just showed you, you can just do regular burpees, that's totally fine. So come down, kick the feet back, push up, jump the feet in, and then you can do squat low, as low as you can, and jump up. Okay, so it's basically the same thing without the ball. Um, probably even better would be to do a broad jump, like broad jump burpees. So come down, do your push up, jump the feet in, and then from here, do a broad jump, jump up. And then you can twist around, or just do a twist jump, right? So burpee, broad jump, twist jump, okay? That would be a great equipment for the alternative. Demonstrating everything is taking longer than the workout itself, but we're getting there. Um, just two more little combos to go through. So my next combo was espressos. So I am using a set of 10 pound dumbbells. Um, my sand bag, I forgot to mention, is filled with about 25 pounds of sand. And my dumbbells are 10 pounds a piece. My oogie ball weighs eight pounds, but we weren't lifting it. So that doesn't matter. Um, I'm mentioning, my weights for reference and just so you know because sometimes people ask me but that this may or may not be the best weight for you so you may need something lighter you may need something heavier that depends on you that depends on your strength it depends on your level of fitness it depends on what you have available to you and how hard you're looking to push yourself today so please make the decision that's best for you but for reference these are 10 pound dumbbells so I'm going to start standing in a neutral position, holding the dumbbells to my side. I'm going to bend down and put the dumbbells on the ground in front of me, and I'm going to jump my feet back into a plank position. I'm going to do a push up from this position, holding onto the dumbbells. And I'm going to jump the feet back in and stand. From here, I'm going to do a hammer curl. So my palms are still facing the outsides of my legs like this. I'm not rotating my arms. I'm keeping them just at my sides like this. I'm going to do a hammer curl and then I'm going to press the weights up overhead. Bring the weights back down and reverse the movement of the curl and return to my starting position, okay? That is an espresso. So weights go down, jump the feet back, push up. Oh, I forgot my ropes. Row, row, and now jump the feet in. Stand, hammer curl, overhead press. That's an espresso. I don't have a kettlebell, but um, if you do, or if you have access to one, um, you might be able to try something like this. So I have the kettlebell to, just once I'm gonna use just one dumbbell to kind of try to demonstrate. You can come down and do a push up either with your hands next to the kettlebell or if you can manage to do it with one hand on the kettlebell, like that. And then maybe a weighted 
Santana side plank. So showing you with my one dumbbell, I'm doing the push-up on the dumbbell, then I'm rotating my body into a side plank, and I'm bringing the weight up by my armpit, pressing it up overhead. Weight comes back down to the shoulder or armpit, rotate back, okay? And then from there, you can jump your feet in and do like a kettlebell swing, and then switch to the other side. Jump the feet back, push up. Weighted Santana plank, stand, kettlebell swing. All right, so that would be a great alternative if you don't have dumbbells, but you have a kettlebell. And again, all of these little combos are basically burpee variations. So if you need an equipment-free modification, you can do a Santana push-up without the weight. So just rotate into a side plank like this, lifting the arm up overhead, rotate back into your plank, jump the feet in, and now from here, you don't have anything to lift overhead, so you can do uh, an air squat or any squat uh, variation that you want. Alternating sides with a trap, so push up, rotate the other way for your Santana plank, jump the feet in, and squat. Um, any kind of push up and squat variation will work and really any burpee variation will work. Of course, with that specific variation, the espressos, we are lifting weight. So if you're looking to do an equipment free modification, there's nothing to lift. So you just need to, um, you know, it, it just put, like I said, any kind of squat variation or a lunge variation at the top, um, you're losing some of the upper body component, but we're doing so many push-ups with this workout anyway, and we're already working our upper body so much that it's fine if you don't have any weight to lift. Just do the Santana push-up, and then um, when you come up, just do any kind of squat variation or lunge variation, and that'll be fine. All right, we're almost done. Last combo. So these are just one leg walkout burpees. So I'm gonna start standing on one leg. So picking up this leg, this is my standing leg. I'm gonna take a second and find my balance here really rooting this foot into the ground, feeling like I have roots growing out from the bottom of my foot on this standing leg and rooting myself into the ground so that I feel really secure and stable here. Once I have my balance, I'm gonna bend this knee of my standing leg and I'm gonna bend down, put my hands on the ground in front of me and walk them out until I am in a plank position, a one leg plank. From here, I'm gonna do a one leg push up and now I'm gonna walk the hands back in and stand and do a one leg jump up. Okay, switching legs with each rep. So now switching sides, I'm gonna put this leg down, this foot comes up, bend down, walk it out, push up, walk the hands back in, stand and jump. Obviously, that is already equipment free, but if you need um, a beginner modification, if it's too difficult to balance on one foot, you can just keep both feet on the ground the whole time and do regular walkout burpees. So standing on both feet, bend down, I have my mat in front of me here, walk the hands out until you're in a side plank. Put the knees down if you need to do the, knee, the uh, push up from your knees, totally fine. So knees down to the mat, that's why I have my mat there. Push up, back up onto the toes, and walk the hands back in. And if you're able to do a little jump up, jump up. If you can't jump up, just stand and reach hands up overhead. Come up onto your toes if you can. Okay, so one more time, a little quicker. Your beginner modification will look like this. Bend down, walk the hands out knees down, push up, back up to plank, walk the hands back in, and stand. Up on your toes if you can, jump if you can. Now, I know I didn't give beginner modifications for every single combo. If you need to see more beginner modifications, please just ask. But here's the thing, this is a long workout, and it's a really tough workout. Even if you do the beginner modifications, it's still pretty long, but it's split up into five minute segments. I was doing six five minute segments for a 30 minute workout, but you don't have to do 30 minutes. You can mix and match, okay? So all we were doing was one minute of jump rope, 
or whatever cardio exercise you're doing, followed by four minutes of whatever combo you're doing. And they were all burpee variations of some sort. So if you wanna pick just two of those combos and uh, do that back to back, you can make yourself a little 10 minute workout. You can pick three combos and make yourself a 15 minute workout. Four combos will be a 20 minute workout. So whatever's gonna work for you, um, and you can just mix and match so that the workout can be five minutes long or 30 minutes long. If you wanna write more combos, it can be 40 minutes long or an hour long. Um, so it's really highly customizable. Um, and I showed you equipment free modifications for everything, and I showed you some beginner modifications. So. I think that that should be sufficient that anyone can really, regardless of your fitness level, put together um, some kind of burpee variation that you can do and some kind of cardio exercise that you can do and follow right along with me. The format, um, if you wanna do it right along with me, then you can just use my timer. You don't need to worry about the format. But if you're wanting to go into the workout on your own, I have my interval timer set for two intervals. The first interval was one minute and the second interval was four minutes. And I had it set for six rounds of those two intervals. So one minute plus four minutes is five minutes, and six rounds times five minutes is 30 minutes, okay? So for each one minute interval, we were doing jump rope. So you'll do either jump rope or whatever cardio exercise you're doing for that one minute. There's no rest interval. So as soon as the jump rope interval has finished, you're gonna move directly on to your combo as quickly as you can. So you have four minutes to spend on each combo. And then as soon as the timer beeps to tell you that your four minutes is up, you go right into your next jump rope interval. So the first jump rope interval, you'll have your full minute pretty much to do jump rope. For the remainder of the rounds, you're going to lose 10, 15, 20 seconds off of your jump rope interval because it's going to take you a few seconds to put your weight down or you know um, grab your jump rope. Uh, so inevitably, you're going to be losing time off of that one minute jump rope interval. My rule, one more plane. I didn't actually have to invoke this rule, but my rule was that I had to complete a minimum of 100 reps of jump rope with each jump rope interval, meaning 100 revolutions of the jump rope. So if um, I just finished my uh, knee raise burpees and then my timer beeps to tell me that my four minute uh, segment is up. Well, I need to get up and move my dip bar over here and then I have to slide my jump rope mat into place and then I have to get my jump rope and you know, then by the time I start my jump rope interval, I've lost you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds off of that interval. So um, if I did, was not able to complete 100 revolutions of the rope before that jump rope interval was through, it was my intent to keep going until I completed 100 reps of jump rope, even though it would mean going into my next um, four minute work interval. So that was my little rule. I never actually had to invoke it. I was able to complete a minimum of 100 reps of jump rope with each jump rope interval. But um, if I hadn't, then I would have uh, gone into the next work interval to complete those 100 reps, just so you know. Um, so that is something to keep in mind if you wanna set a minimum for yourself and say, well, I have to at least complete 100 reps and even if it goes into my work interval, um, then that's an option. You don't have to do it that way. That's an option. That's what I was intending to do, but it never got to that point. I think I there was one interval where I fit in like exactly 100 reps, but um, I was able to at least fit in those 100 reps every round. So, so set your timer for two intervals, one minute intervals, four minute intervals, six rounds, jump rope for one minute, and then do your combo for four minutes, and then immediately on to the next round. Um, one minute jump rope, four minutes on your combo. I really think that I have explained and demonstrated everything more than sufficiently. I feel exhausted just from this little tutorial section, so I'm going to wrap it up. But before I go, let me just say thank you to everyone who's been working out with me lately. You guys rock. If you did this workout with me today, thank you so much. Please let me know what you thought of it and how you did. Thank you to everyone who has been subscribing to my channel. 
um, watching the videos, liking them, sharing them, commenting on them, and especially to those of you who have been commenting with the secret code phrase of the day. Um, so before I say goodbye, I will give you today's secret code phrase of the day. It is free cable is the ultimate aphrodisiac. So if you are still watching this video after all this time, please let me know that someone is still watching. Let me know you are still watching the video by going down to the comment section and leaving me a comment that says free cable is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Free cable is the ultimate aphrodisiac. That is it for today and I will see you all next time. Bye.